We already talked about volatility. We know it's a measurement of a substance or tendency of a substance to become a vapor. And relative volatility will be a measurement or as you know, relative depends on the system. So if we change the system, we change it. And this depends on two species. So we are going to be talking about a mixture of two species. And the good thing or the, let's say the usefulness of this is to identify which one will volatilize first, which one will remain as a liquid. Now, remember that for volatility, we have the following definition. So the volatility of A equals the partial pressure of component A divided by the molar fraction of component A in the li liquid. So essentially partial pressure of A, remember that this is given by this. So the total pressure times the molar fraction of A. And XA is nothing more than the total moles of A in the liquid divided by the total moles in the mixture. Now for a binary mixture, we have A and B. So let's do the same for both. PA divided by XA and PB divided by XB. Where P is the partial pressure and X is the liquid mole fraction. Okay, now it's time to define relative volatility. So the definition is now as follow. So we need the volatility of A, the volatility of B, divide them, and then you will have the ratio of volatilities. So if you do this, you need to divide A and B, which is PA divided by XA, and PB divided by XB. Now remember that we can always, and it's very convenient, to let all or the minimum amount of variables, so we know that B can be defining, or XB can be defined in terms of XA and PB can be defined on terms of YB, which can later be determined on terms of YA. So try to, let's try to set up all in terms of A, which is the most volatile material. So we got the ratio. This is the volatility of A, volatility of B. So if we perform this mathematical operation, we will see that this goes up and this goes down now remember that this is given here so let's substitute one minus xa pa remains here pb also remember that pb can be substituted here so we set up here and xa remains here now let's go further remember that we have here yb so yb is also one minus ya so it's here this part right here this part right here and all remains the same. Now let's continue. Remember that partial pressure of A can be given as the molar fraction of A times PT, which was given here. So let's substitute that as well. So we now have PT, XA, YA, and PT. So this divides this one, and we remain YA times one minus XA divided by XA times one minus ya, which is right here. Typically, you will see this expression also as follows, because this is, let's say, we are going to assume that this is based on the most volatile material, even though I will recommend you first to use this one, this notation, to ensure which uh, value you get. I see plenty of students inputting here the data of yb, and this xa, and maybe yb and they it's very chaotic remember that this is the same that's the point the idea is to use the same one so i wouldn't have a problem if you substitute all in terms of b but ensure that you are substituting all in terms of b or all in terms of a now talking about this new equation when alpha value equals one there is no separation possible and i want you to first pause the video and try to guess why. What makes it one? So this and this and this are the total product. When this equals one, we cannot solve. And uh, yes, it is because both components are now equal volatile. So let's say that A is going in the same rate as B. So we have this mixture 
a plus b and we're hitting it we will see that a and b are going in the same rate so we will not have any separation so a and b this composition will remain the same and the vapor condens condensate will remain the same so okay yeah so if you wanted let me go back if you wanted to solve this for one you will see that if we pass this one right here so it will be x one minus y equals y one minus x so let's solve x minus x y equals y minus x y this can be this is the same part so x equals y so the main problem is that the gradient or let's say the force or the driving force is now zero there is no change in volatility there will be no mass uh, transfer in this case so the net transfer or technically the net transfer will be zero so maybe you have some a going here but you will also have some b going here and backwards as well so the total rate will be equal to zero okay we already solved for this and note the larger the value of alpha above one the greater the degree of separation so for instance here you see the separation is large here is short okay recall that when a system has reached equilibrium it will be impossible for us uh, to keep uh, separating the material so once again the driving force or the rate will be zero in equilibrium the rate from vapor to liquid equals the rate from liquid to vapor of both a and b and separation by distillation is only feasible within the region bounded between these two curves so this is the curve and distillation will be only possible within this part right here why because outside of this species we do not have let's say a driving force so the driving force is only between these two lines okay last notes in general relative volatility of a mixture changes with the mixture composition so that's also very important alpha so unfortunately we solve alpha for one but the problem right here guys is that alpha will be one value for a set of temperature pressure and composition so let's say that we are increasing temperature and increasing temperature typically changes composition pressure remains the same so we will have a new alpha which not necessarily needs to be the same so that's very important to keep in mind